Right now, it's the passion of, of building and... You know, I absolutely like the idea that you are looking at the games aspect because I personally believe that the reason why I am right now who I am or what I do right now is because of the toys I played with when I was a little child. And and I tell you, and uh, I don't know, you probably, I'm not probably the first person to tell you this, but I learned a lot when I was playing. I, I really learned, I destroyed the toys. <laughs> Oh, let me, but I learned a lot and I also learned how to be practical. I learned how the world uh, uh, revolves. It's electronics. It's about games and this is the new, the new frontier for these kids and, and learning it at this level I think is 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 great, uh, but the thing is, the best way is really what we're trying, what you are trying to do. You are encouraging them to go to STEM in general, to go to a specific school. Well, we will highlight. Oh, you're doing it here. This is College Park. This is you know this is the studio. And you familiarize them with that one, but more importantly is to instill on them the simple passion. I wanted to do science. They could do it a thousand or UMAB. That's not, I think, if you're able to do that, in my mind, that's a win. To have your program specifically, you know, funded, that's the icing on the cake. Here at STEAM Your Dreams, our mission is to engage, inspire, and empower kids to get into STEM careers. So here at the universities at Shady Grove, we're going to work collaboratively to brainstorm and come up with a way to engage and empower them to pathways to wonderful programs that exist here at the University of Shady Grove. So this campus is really designed for a lot of diverse students that a lot of them come from community college, a lot of them could come from places like, you know, other four-year universities like Maryland College Park or Towson or other four-year schools. But I think the vast majority of students are community college students who get typically get their associate's degree, they get 60 general education credits, or at least 50 general education credits. But at the end of the day, they're coming to these programs, including ours, and they're getting their last two years done, their major specific junior level, senior level degree uh, classes done. Um, and then they get their bachelor's of science, bachelor of arts, depending on the major, um, earned. The big thing is that they have to come in, they can't just say, I want to start school and come here with no background in, you know, 20, 30, 40 credits from another institution. They have to come in with typically at least 50 credits, but the Associates of Science degree or Associates of Arts degree is really nice because the gen eds typically are all satisfied. On behalf of Steam Your Dreams, I'm Roman Sudan Montego, and I want to walk you into the 2025 Ocean Bowl Games here at the University of Shady Groves. And we want to thank you and a big shout out to our wonderful partner and hosting partner, Dr. Anne Cardemian, here, she's the executive director. This immersive two-day special event will come. Will start on July 24th. The first day, they got to do brain games and playground games. These brain games are STEM-based projects where participants earn points for completing or nearly completing their projects, tracked on the patent game or leaderboard. And they'll do. They'll be doing playground games. They'll be kicking a ball or doing jumping jacks. We haven't quite figured it out yet. And finally, on the third day. They do e-gaming and e-sports 2.0. They use all those points that they gather on the game on leaderboard to determine their where their position is on there. So the points from the brain and the recreation games create competitive brackets for prizes like cash, scholarships, and savings accounts. We're super excited about this wonderful engineering building that we're gonna be in, building four here on the campus. And we also wanna give a huge shout out to our new sponsor, AstraZeneca, for helping us to engage and inspire and empower the future. Thank you. We're in the Cyber-Physical Systems Engineering program. We are a College Park ed, uh, undergraduate major located at the University of Shady Grove, and we focus on the principles of electrical engineering and computer engineering, combining them together with the focus on embedded systems. When I say embedded systems, I mean sticking computers and stuff. 
Anytime you have a smart device or a device that has some kind of logic, some kind of brain, and it can take information from its outside world, its surroundings, and act upon that with some kind of actuation, turning on a light, spinning a motor, whatever that is, that's a cyber-physical system or an embedded system. The, uh, the most common examples you have nowadays are you know, ranging from your smartphones, your smart devices, all the way up to even the more simple things like when you walk in the room and the lights come on automatically. These are all cyber-physical systems. I'm really the coordinator for the program. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of the administration, a lot of the organizing for a lot of the events we do, and um, just the day-to-day -day of running the program, uh, a lot of support with that. Uh, going back to what Matt was saying with the uh, program, we are also, that foundation of hardware and software is at the core of this major, and we are actually the very first CPSC program undergraduate level in the entire nation that is ABET accredited. And so that accreditation basically is a, is a gold standard for engineering uh, programs and engineers. And a lot of employers, they like to see that their, their uh, applicants and their future employees are ABET accredited both here and abroad na internationally. Sometimes we need to play rock, paper, scissors to determine brackets or mm -hmm. something like yeah. that when we're gaming or whatever. So we're going to find a way to apply this within that flow. Mm -hmm. The other thing, I, I, I haven't done it yet, and I'm still working on it. I have a year. Maybe I'll get it done this time. I keep saying I'm going to do it. I found online a cheap gesture recognition sensor. So it can, it can recognize whether or not you have zero fingers held out, two fingers held out, or five fingers held out. So in theory, with a little bit of programming and practice, I can make this thing cheap. Drop its fingers, and it's going to go rock, paper, scissors, and that's rock. So I tie. <laughs> and then it has two other random ones for rock, paper, scissors. There's scissors. Be your machine. Come on. No, I'm tying apparently forever. Oh, and then rock, paper, scissors. I now have been beaten by my machine actually because <laughs> it just threw scissors on paper. But you get the safety normalized, then yeah. it's Here's an Arduino. Yep. This is a microcontroller. Microcontrollers are the heart of embedded systems. Mm -hmm. We program these. Here's how you program these. Here's what it means. It means to program these in some way. And mm -hmm. then we can even have them edit the code. Yep. And if they're a hyper genius and they come up to me, I can say, all right, well, you think you're so smart. Let's jump a few examples up and have you do like serial plotter or stuff or something like. We gamify the learning experience. It's so fun to play. Um, in our gamified experience at Ocean Bowl games that people lose their mind. But we cover every letter of STEAM. We have for the universities at Shady Grove, we are going to be doing technology and we're going to be doing computer science for the cyber physical program. And we're going to be doing engineering. And notice a cool name, Let's Get Cyber Physical. And for technology, it's all about create a pie, eat a pie, get it? So... We're looking very much so to continue working with Brian and Matt. Let's go back to them. Zero is, this is showing them, these are microcontrollers. These are like the heart of a lot of embedded systems. These small, this chip right here is the processor. You need uh, Arduino board and then optionally an LED and a resistor because you can either make the onboard LED blink or hook up your own external LED. Okay. And then LEDs, you can get a thousand LEDs for 10 bucks. Resistor, okay. you can get a thousand resistors for like 10 bucks. We'll like, do. Ten, five bucks. That's trivial. You'll buy one or two kits of those and you'll have everything to train them the whole, the whole summer. Standard, cheap, hobbyist microcontroller. You're going to find these on Amazon. You're going to find these on Spark, Fun, DigiKey, wherever you want. Mm -hmm. um, this is an Uno. This is a Nano. Unos are like 25. Nanos mm -hmm. are like $8 each. Okay. Uh, these are much more powerful and fast, but we don't care about that for really basic stuff like what we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, if the people, whoever is doing your training, are comfortable mm -hmm. using the tinier ones that they need to plug into a breadboard, that's awesome. If mm -hmm. not, these are, you don't need a breadboard. These are plug and play entirely from like, yeah. if they already know how to run in and plug the board in and program, then we may even be able to have them do a demo that's a little more involved. But that would be up to you guys as you teach them. Like, go through the example code. If there's a particular example you see in there that you think, oh, we can get these done in five minutes. Beautiful. Yep. We'll show them that one. Yep. Um, right now, like I said, Blink is the easiest one I could think of. But there's also, like I said, there's ones that use a, a simple, like, a couple LEDs. Mm -hmm. And they do, like, you know, like a, a siren. You know, you do a red LED and a blue LED, and it makes a wee-wee-wee-looking thing. Okay. You can get a little buzzer and make it uh, do, like, an alarm system or something. There are, like, very simple, easy demos you can do with the power of one of these, mm -hmm. uh, the programming cable, which is this USB-A cable, like a, basically like a printer cable, programming cable. Okay. Um, it goes into what port? The, uh, USB port on the computer, and then this okay. big, USB. chunky port. Okay. Uh, if you use the Nanos, it's all micro USB. So, uh, you know, like not the current USB standard, mm -hmm. but one USB standard to go, that mm -hmm. kind of cable. Mm -hmm. So you'll need Arduinos and cables. And then you will need whatever little hardware uh, you're going to work with them on, either resistors or capacitors or LEDs. 
Mm -hmm. If you go through the example documentation I showed you on Arduino, it will tell you the exact components you right. need. So step zero. So step zero, and in order to make these do things, you need to be able to program them. So step one will be you need some kind of software that can program them. In this case, we have an IDE, that's the Arduino uh, Interactive Development Environment. Mm -hmm. And then we have the the actual connection of this is an example code, and we can walk through the pseudocode and say, a, you know, code, uh, when you upload it, it typically runs in what's called a loop. So this thing is just gonna run forever until I tell it to stop. So before I set up the loop, I tell it, turn on one of these pins and turn the light on and say, all right, you are now gonna be on and ready to listen. And then the loop, all the loop's saying is talking to that LED over and over again, telling it to turn on and off, turn on and off. Mm -hmm. And you can see that instruction, digital right, LED high, turning it on. Wait a second, digital right, LED low. Now it's off. Explain you know, real quick and show them. So this is, all this does is say, hi, I'm going to make the built-in LED on this blink. So now they've, come in, they plug the Arduino in, and they've opened up the software development interface, and they say, I want to upload the codes. Yes. Arduino has a wide array of documentation for all their stuff and their examples, so if you oh. go to Arduino. Um, I think what Matt's going to be doing most of the day is the Arduino work that he was Absolutely. showing you. Yep. That's Matt's going to be his wheelhouse. We'll have other employees, other staff members um, at these other places. This is under development still. You're seeing really early on what's going to happen. So the idea is these yeah. stepper motors right here uh, that I'm twisting manually can move this like an Etch-a-Sketch basically. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to program a device, this Arduino right here, to automatically track the puck using a camera and basically play air hockey such that the machine will always defend and then try and beat. It will run itself. We'll still have a staff member there, but mm -hmm. once it's once it's working, the kids will just try to score on it. The big thing is they got to be a little gentle. They don't want to break anything, reaching across and tearing mm -hmm. anything in its, in its heart, but it's the same technology that we use in factories and in, in industry right now. I mean, this is moving based on computer-based control. That's how <laughs> we do all in, industrial processes, all machines, all that kind of stuff. So even though it's a fun, silly game, it's a real world application that we might use with these kind of stepper motors and it's a cypress system, so it's fun. Speak into it. It's going to take what I said, translate it into text, and then fingerspell that text. Okay. U-G-I-T-E-S, so there's a B word here. So for the students, they actually could speak into the microphone and say, hi, my name is uh, Emily. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is John. Yeah. And, and see it signing back at them. Oh man, I see the advancement of this. It'd be nice to have two hands, so they can do a full <laughs> yeah, yeah. sign language. Yeah, arms. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the other problem is that you can see, like by the animation, that would be the real technology because this is not how you fit, hand, this is not how you speak ASL. Right. This is like <laughs> finger spelling. Nobody speaks yeah. English by saying H E L L M I. You spell it every yeah, single letter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Right. But, well, one of my my main one of my main illustrable characters, Jay. Mm. This this in the book series when I was composing of the story. I wanted I, I, I wanted Jay to have one of his attributes and one of his many skills. He would speak. He would use sign language to to the dolphins and other. Pretty and working. This is Magic Gambit. Mm -hmm. So Magic Gambit runs off of a computer and then a pie over here. And the computer runs a chess bot like mm -hmm. uh, like LeeChess.com or Chess.com runs and then talks to the pie. And so if I'm playing against the chess bot and I go, all right, this is my first move. The camera reads the board tells the chess bot, this is the board state you have, what's your next move? Mm. And the bot goes, okay, take this piece and put it here. And so what it'll do is it'll light this piece up green and it'll write that square up red and tell you, all right, I've moved the piece where you want. And then you say, all right, I made your move, now here's my move. And so you can play chess physically against the chess bot. You know, cyber physical systems engineering is a new program that is part of this Clark School this is the third program in the department. I know I don't want to bore you, but electrical engineering is 130 years old at College Park. Computer engineering is 30 years old. So those are the two, the latest program is 30 years old, computer engineering. We decided after some elders, this was about 10 years ago, decided what is the, what is the technology going into it. So we anticipated a lot of these new advances that we, that we are now enjoying a very, very fast bandwidth of communications. This uh, technology is getting energetically very, very uh, uh, economical. It still takes a lot of energy, but now getting things small, we're able to do all of this stuff. The power is there. 
And so it evolved beyond just computers, computer engineering, it evolved into a bigger umbrella. And that is why there is this thing called cyber physical systems engineering. CPSE, you know, I'll tell you something. It means college park shines everywhere. Right? <laughs> but cyber physical systems is simple. If, if, if People get confused, which is why we're trying to also evangelize the name. Because people get, what's cyber? So, uh, cyber warfare, cyber security. But yes, but for us, cyber really means the word cyber is anything that can compute and can communicate. So that's a computer with some sort of a communication device. This is a very sophisticated uh, uh, cyber physical system. And then the physical is the rest of the world. It's the rest of the physical thing. For example, a camera is a device that will simply look at the levels of light. It's a camera. How do you make it an eye? In other words, a camera that can identify who you are. It's like an, an eye, you know? It holds this memory. How do you make that into an eye? That is an example of cyber physical systems engineering. Hey, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you at Ocean Bowl Games 2025, both in Baltimore and at this wonderful universities at Shady Grove. If you're interested in partnering, volunteering, donating, sponsoring, um, being a spectator, if you're news, whatever you are, we welcome you in the building. Spectators are free. And there are some scholarships available, but slots are filling up fast. Contact me or someone from Senior Dreams today. Take care.